Hey guys, fishing and stuff. Today, we're making an awesome cutting board mount. So, stick around. Today's DIY is about an awesome cutting board mount. It looks machine, but it's all handmade. And speaking of DIYs, if you've not checked out my channel page, go over and check it out. I got a long list of DIYs and you'll probably find something to help you save some money. And if you like it, click subscribe and click the bell so that YouTube will notify you when I post videos and you can watch them. I made a cutting board DIY about a year ago. And if you're interested in making your own cutting board, you can go check that video out. But today's DIY, I'm using this awesome catfish cutting board. It's really, really a cool cutting board. It's about the best one I've seen on the market. It's even got these little inserts made into it that'll hold your bolts better when you bolt it on. I know Chris, the owner of Catfish, and I called him and asked him if he would send me one because I was making a base video, and I wanted to check out one of his cutting boards. Now, I told him I'd send this back, but after looking at this thing, deal's off, Chris, I'm keeping it. <laughs> but seriously, this is a nice cutting board. I love that two-tone. It's got a place for your pliers and it's got a place for your fillet knife. But if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link in the description box where you can get your own. And if you do buy one, if you just put fishing and stuff somewhere in the comments, when you get ready to check out, they're going to send you a free gift. And it may even be one of their new awesome logo decals. Well, we talked enough about this. Let's quit wasting time and let's get into this. All right, so today I'm making a cutting board base so I can mount it to my boat. I got some 3 8 inch uh, aluminum. I think it's two inches wide. And I got some solid stock aluminum i found at the scrapyard it's about a half inch thick i got different kinds of bolts some of them are for countersinking and some of them aren't now normally i use my harbor freight tap kit but i went ahead and bought some better taps to do this with because aluminum isn't the easiest thing to tap in the world you would think steel would be harder but actually steel is harder so it taps easier aluminum's softer and it being softer makes it harder to tap because it wants to gum up everything the first step we need to take i think i'm going to make the part that bolts onto this cutting board like a h i actually got that idea from catfish because they make a mount for these cutting boards that's really nice and if you buy one and you don't want to make a mount check theirs out too but I'm going to take this aluminum and I'm going to make a H, a bar across here and a bar across here. And I'm going to get my holes drilled out and get all that lined up first. Okay, I went ahead and tried this on there to make sure my holes were lined up right. They're lined up pretty good. Now I'm going to cut this and I might round the edges off with something. Then I just got to repeat it for this side. I'm so happy I ain't gotta use a cut off wheel no more. Those things will kill you. This bandsaw here I built is really, really awesome. And it saves me a lot of time and trouble when making stuff. And I made a video about it. If you didn't check it out, you need to go check it out because you can build this thing for under $100, $100. And when you're done, all you gotta do is plug it in. All right, I got two pieces of my H. I went ahead and bolted them on just to make sure everything fit right. I also cut the center piece, which I'm going to line up here. And then I'm going to mark where my holes are going to be on this side and this side. And I'm going to drill it. Use it as a template to mark the other pieces. I drilled out the holes in my little plate and I countersunk them so when I put my bolt in they'll set flush and they won't stick up. Now I gotta line this thing up the way it goes. Once I get it centered I'll mark out my holes in each one of these. Then I'll have to drill these two plates out but I'm going to drill them and tap them.
Okay, after I tap these, I put them back on and the holes are lining up pretty good. But what I'm doing, I'm leaving this just a little bit loose. That way you have a little play when you're putting your bolts in these six. Okay, when I started tightening my bolts up, I realized that they're just a tiny bit too long. The reason I left the bolts in it and just loosen them up is so everything will stay straight. Now I can take this off and I can flip it over. My studs are sticking through a little bit and now I can just sand these down smooth with the aluminum. Now that I sanded these studs off, it'll lay on the board flat. Now I can flip it back over line it back up with my holes, put my bolts back in. Now I got it all bolted back down and I got it tightened up. And we got the base part that holds the board put together. The next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of this thick aluminum block and I'm gonna cut it. We're gonna attach it to this. We got our block cut down to the size we want. Next, I'm gonna have to find the center. I'm gonna drill a half inch hole in it for my half inch aluminum shaft. I think personally this aluminum shaft's gonna hold it, but if you don't think this is strong enough, what you could do, you could get a half inch stainless steel bolt too. You can cut the threads and the head off and you'll have a stainless steel shaft that's half inch. If the aluminum one don't work, I'll go this route, but I'm making this thing to where I can take it apart when I'm not using it. We need to find the center, drill a half inch hole, then we're going to drill a hole in from this side. Okay, now we're finished with our block. I put this handle in it. So when you put your shaft in it, it tightens up on it. It's gonna be what holds it in place. Now, we just have to attach our block to our base. I'm gonna find the center, and then I'm gonna draw my holes where they need to be drilled at. After I drill the holes, I'll transfer it onto the base and drill the holes in it and tap them. And now, as you can see, I got my block tapped. I put my bolts in, tighten them up good. Now we gotta do is bolt the bracket back down to a cutting board. I'm really shocked how solid this thing is. And it's just all bolted together. No welds or nothing. Let's get started on that bottom base. All right, I'm gonna use this aluminum block for my base. Same width as a monster rod holder. I'm gonna make it a little bit taller than one. And I'm basically gonna make one of these out of this. So I'm gonna cut an inch into each side and then cut it straight down. Start out with a profile kind of like this first, then we'll go from there. All right, so I got my base started now, starting to get a little bit of form to it. If you look at this on the side of it, you can probably see where I'm going. This is a monster rod holder base. I'm doing something like it, but it's for the cutting board, so I'm making it a little bit bigger. I'm going to try to adjust that angle just a little bit. The next thing I got to do is I got to drill my two holes, try to get the angle better than this one. Now the top of that sits level with the rest of the boat. Now I need to clean it up and drill my holes. Ignore the rain. Seems like that's all it's did this year, the rain. This is one of the hardest parts right here. I got it in my drill press and I had to lock it in, shim it, and keep it level so we can drill our big hole for the cutting board. looks pretty good i mean kind of looks machined it ain't perfect but i do think it's gonna work and i installed a hole down so you can take the shaft out 
and you can take the shaft out of the base when you're not using the cutting board. That way you can store everything when you're finished with it. Turned out pretty good. I like the way it turned out anyway. You see how I made these angles? It's because the gunnel sets at an angle and you want this part to be level. And then you have to drill your hole at angle so that your rod is plumb so the cutting board sets level. Turned out pretty good, I like it. And you can just loosen up this knob and you can take the cutting board out. Then you can store it somewhere. I think if you have any trouble out of it though, I would change this part to stainless. Well that turned out awesome. Hey guys, if you like this video, click that like button. And if you ain't subscribed, then what you waiting on? But on a serious note, I like to joke around and play. And my channel's at 49,300 and something subscribers. By the time I post this video, I should be at 50,000. But that means I got 50,000 people to thank because I never would have made it there if it wasn't for you guys watching. I'm not sponsored by Catfish, and they didn't sponsor the video. And honestly, it's not the cheapest cutting board on the market, and it's not the highest cutting board on the market, but it's the nicest one I've ever seen on the market. Look at that routered out name, that's cool. I called him back and asked him if he was cool with me giving it away. Well, he's so cool with it that he wants to give away a shirt and a hat. So there's not gonna be one winner, there's gonna be two winners. And to enter, all you gotta do is write, catfish is cool, catfish with a K. The person that gets picked first can pick what they want. The person picked second gets what's left. So subscribe, like, and share this video. Catfish is cool in the comment section. And some lucky winner's gonna get a cutting board or a t-shirt and a hat next week. And if you want to buy a cutting board or anything else they make, they make a lot of nice stuff. Everything that company makes is really nice stuff and they're super nice guys. I'll leave a link to their website in the description box below. Go over and check them out because they make a lot of stuff like I said. Look guys, as always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you on the next build.